Hi, it's Mr. Ramage, and our studies have looked at the Industrial Revolution. We've started with our Agricultural Revolution, and we've moved into the factories and the textile mills. But now we're going to talk a little bit about iron and transportation, two huge things that we are going to need in order to drive our industrialization forward. So in 1784, a guy by the name of Henry Court is going to come up with a new process called puddling. And this is in the development of iron. So what we're going to be doing is taking cast iron, which is strong, but also kind of brittle, and transforming it into wrought iron. Now wrought iron is going to be stronger and it's going to be able to support larger buildings and machines. So as our urbanization and our industrialization grows, we need building materials that will support the weight of larger, taller um, and, and bigger buildings that are going to be constructed, as well as the machines and the railroads as well. So without a stable form of iron and a stable building material, we're not going to be able to grow as big as we want to. So Quartz process of puddling basically takes the iron through this reverberating furnace and with the circulation of air that takes place within this furnace, it's going to remove the carbon from the iron, thereby making it stronger. It's also going to produce more iron and it's going to be more cost efficient through the use of coal as its heating source. So this new iron is going to allow us to build bigger and stronger things. And uh, England is going to become an iron giant. So by the year 1740, as our Industrial Revolution is just kind of kicking off, England's producing about 17,000 tons of iron. By 1780, four years later, we're up to 70,000 tons of iron. And then after Court's development of the puddling process, we are going to be up to about 3 million tons of iron production by 1852. And in 1852, England produced more iron than the rest of the world combined, making it a true iron giant of the Industrial Revolution. And iron, prior to steel, will be the main source of our building material. So let's shift into some other inventions in terms of transportation. Now we know that the steam engine is gonna power our factories and our machines. Now the steam engine is going to power our transportation. So in 1801, Richard Trevithick is gonna build the first steam powered carriage, which he called the Puffer. And essentially it's taking James Watt's redesigned steam engine and putting it on wheels and using the same process that we are using to power our machines now to power our transportation. Now, we're not going to go a super deep dive into the history of the railroad. We're just going to look at a couple of early models and designs because uh, it is going to take a while for them to figure this out. In 1804, Trevithick redesigns his uh, steam engine and he puts it on a track called uh, the Penny Darren engine. Now, they had competitions and contests to see who could design the best engine. This engine was able to pull five cars loaded with 10 tons of iron and 70 iron workers about nine miles at the grand old speed of five miles per hour. Now, that doesn't sound like a very fast railroad, but you have to consider this is 1804 and the idea that we can even do this is pretty amazing. Other designers are going to step in. Uh, Robert Stevenson is going to come up with the rocket and we're starting to see here in our images something that begins to look more common to us as a railroad or steam engine. This becomes the first public railroad. They had 32 miles of track. It could go upwards of 16 miles per hour and was able to pull 40 tons. And as time goes on, these railroads are just going to become bigger, stronger, and more powerful. By 1840, England has about 2,000 miles of track. 20 years later, they're up to about 6,000 miles of track. And the development of the railroad is going to impact everything from business to travel. It's gonna increase the speed in which you can move goods and people back and forth. It's gonna increase the distance in which you can ship goods. It's gonna create an entirely new industry, the entire railroad industry. So we need railroads and cars, we need tracks, we need everything that goes along with that. It's also gonna increase the demand for coal as well as the demand for iron. And the railroad is gonna have a massive impact on basically every aspect of life during the industrial revolution. 
in the United States, the railroad is going to also have a huge impact. If you look to the left, we see a map of railroad lines in 1860, uh, just one year before the start of the Civil War. A mere 20 years later, you can see how many more railroad lines there are in the United States. We're gonna see about 40,000 miles of railroads were built. Uh, between 1860 and 1880, bringing the total up to about 94,000 miles of railroad track in the United States. Now, if we can put a steam engine on a railroad, we could probably put a steam engine on a boat. And in 1807, Robert Fulton's going to do that with the North River Steamboat, which you can see a figure of here. Uh, the Claremont, which is developed by Fulton, which is going to incorporate the same idea. We're going to put a steam engine on a boat and we are no longer going to need sails. We can no longer have to rely on the wind. We can take our boat wherever we want to go. We can travel up river instead of just down river. And that's huge, right? So if you were sailing down the Mississippi River, you'd have to follow the flow of the river. You couldn't go upstream. You had to always go downstream. Well, now with the steam engine, you can absolutely go upstream and that's going to be a huge game changer. Like the railroad, the steam engine is going to increase the speed and distance in which we can travel. So that's going to reduce costs over time so we can ship our goods faster and further and cheaper. Also increases the demand for iron as well as coal. So it's going to impact those industries and it is going to create its own industry. So we're going to need companies to build steamboats and steam engines and people to run the steamboats and the whole shipping industry is going to transform. So implementing the steam engine in terms of transportation is going to be a huge game changer. And as our industrialization progresses and as we move through the latter parts of the 1800s, we are going to see industrialization beginning to spread primarily to other countries in Western Europe and to the United States. So industrialization is going to begin to develop in Germany and France and in Belgium. And it's also going to develop in the United States. Now, again, there's other countries that will industrialize a little bit later, but these are the countries that possess those four factors of production that we mentioned in our earlier lessons. They had the land, the labor, the capital, and the entrepreneurs in order to begin this process of industrialization. Countries like Russia and Italy and some other countries in Southern and Eastern Europe are going to industrialize a little bit later and a little bit more slowly because they haven't really mastered those four factors of production yet. So what are some takeaways from this lesson? Well, number one, we are able to build bigger and stronger machines and buildings and cities and factories because we have the material in which to do that. Stronger iron is gonna allow for taller and bigger buildings, factories, bridges, railroads, etc. Without that building material, we're not gonna get much bigger. Number two, steam power, which is already being used to power our factories and machines is now gonna be used to power our transportation. The steamboats and the locomotive are going to be game changers in terms of shipping goods and materials, in terms of movements of people. It's going to really truly revolutionize everything. And the industrialization is going to begin to spread, moving into places like Germany and France and the United States, and to those countries that possess those four factors of production. Thanks for watching this video lesson, and I hope you learned something.